previously on The Greatest Trek. We're riding 2,000 kilometers by motorbikes across Vietnam. Landing in Ho Chi Minh City, we quickly got ourselves some bikes and rode out to Kuchi to undertake a cheeky hands-on history lesson. From there, we headed to our first major town, a place called Delat, in the heart of the central highlands where we explored fountains, and where we even tried to get lucky in a go-go lounge named Envy. After riding down some of the toughest roads to date, we were rewarded with some impressive scenery and a run-in with an elephant. Now on day 11, we look to our maps and our next destination is a city called Pleiku. We're still breathing and this means that our great trek continues. It's day 11 of our motorbike adventure across Vietnam and we're gearing up for another day on the hogs. Overnight, we bunk in a town called Ea Drang, which sees us now over 500 kilometers from our starting point in Ho Chi Minh City. Today, we aim to ride over 100 kilometers to the next major town on our torn and slightly scrumbled map, a town called Pleiku. Past 10 or so days in our back pocket, we'd started to develop a bit of a pattern. We'd roll out of bed, tie our sacks onto our bikes, and ride 20 or so kilometers to get away from wherever we had stayed and pull into a small village for a morning coffee. So we woke up quite late uh, after a well-earned sleep last night and um, the restaurant's just gone dead quiet as I start speaking to the camera. But we've done about 20 k's from the hotel. We've just stopped for some coffee um, to get us alive and awake, but uh, feeling much better today actually. Um, yesterday we had this kind of like, it was a coffee, um, but it had some condensed milk in and they put an ice cube into it and it was absolutely beautiful. Come on. Um, and so yeah, we tried to find that, but so we've got coffee shops, so I mean, who cares, it's just as good. So it's about 80 kilometers to the next city, um, and hope to get there about 3 o'clock, and we'll see if we're going to stay there overnight or uh, what we're going to do, but another hard days of riding ahead. The ride to play crew turned out to be a bit of a mixed bag. The weather was perfect with blue skies and beaming sun rays, and the roads were amazing with no traffic and smooth, delicious tarmac. But I did have one reoccurring issue. I couldn't for the life of me secure my bag to my bike properly. And so again and again, we had to pull over as I did my best to tie this damn knot. This one, bro. This one, bro. Slight annoyances aside, it was probably one of our best rides so far. In fact, why couldn't every day be like this? I mean, who cares if the video would be a bit boring? We arrived in Pleiku with plenty of time to spare. And what better way to celebrate than with a refreshing golden sud? Okay, so as you can see, we're having a bit of celebration suds because we've reached Pleiku. Uh, originally, we were planning to just zoom on down to um, Tom, Tom. But uh, John's chain slipped out again, and um, we decided, you know what, let's just treat ourselves. We'll stay in the big city, we'll get a nice hotel room, um, which we did. And uh, we've just ordered some food because we're starving, um, so I'm really looking forward to this meal. Got some rather warm 333 here. Um, so hopefully we'll get some ice for that, but otherwise everything's awesome and the roads have been excellent so we've been making wicked progress. Just kind of let us take a day off now, or not a day off, but like an afternoon off almost. Uh, yeah, so um, Pleiku seems like a cute little town and there's a few restaurants listed on the Lonely Planet Guide which we might check out later on. Um, but yeah, nice massive hotel room, we've got one each, uh, should be awesome relaxation tonight, for John especially. Day 12, greatest trek, Ho Chi Minh City to Hanoi. There was definitely a sense of purpose going into today's ride. But how long would it last? With 100 kilometers to cover to get to the next major town called Play Can, there was plenty of gravel between us and a cozy bed for the night. Onwards we rode and it wasn't long at all before we were back, parked, on the side of the road. We've uh, just stopped uh, for about the uh, third or fourth time on this trip uh, due to uh, Team Rwanda having a uh, chain failure yet again. Um, 
making good progress and we just stopped for some coffee and um, as we started going again uh, the chain uh, fell off and about I put it on three or four times but uh, the, the bolts and the wheels actually just come absolutely loose so it's only a matter of time really until the wheel started uh, falling off so we got into this little pit stop here and um, it's just fixing the chain back up again um, and they've got a few little mutts running around as well which is proved to be uh, quite entertaining. Um, but apart from that, we're making good time. We're gonna get on that Ho Chi Minh Trail. I mean, we're already on the highway, but um, the most talked about part of the trail is further up. And there's, um, it's meant to be just absolutely magnificent. The, um, the views and the, the riding and whatnot. So, anyway, it's more important. Let's hope that this, uh, this chain will stay on for another 100 or 200 kilometers. Otherwise, it's going to be very annoying. Well, it didn't take long for the wheel to be drilled back in place and we were again back on the road, bombing towards Pleiku through the Vietnamese countryside. And as we got used to the smooth, luscious, slightly sensual tarmac, it decided to implode and we were again greeted with a volcanic terrain. Just arrived in Con Tam, 50 kilometers from where we stayed last night. The road very suddenly turned to a bit of gravel again. Nonetheless, we're here and uh, we're going to grab some, uh, some coffee uh, before we press on. We'd arrived in Kontum, the capital town of the Kontum province. Located inland on the central highlands of Vietnam, it's not all that far from the borders of Laos and Cambodia. Nonetheless, after our glass of potent caffeinated cafe, sir, and a quick glance at the fabled, scrumpled up map, it was onwards to Pleiku. Heading out of Kontum, we went through an array of different terrains. The highways leading out the town were smooth and easy riding, but once we were out in the province roads, they quickly diminished and we were back to hogging in gear two, trying to reduce the amount of damage being done to the bikes. As we left the province of Kontum, we neared the next town, Dak Rao. The roads became bearable again, and with about 25 kilometers to go until we reached Plaku, we pulled over to take in the incredible scenery that we'd have found ourselves in version. It was here in Dak Rao that we probably, for the first time, realized we were in the heart of Vietnam. We were away from any civilization that we could relate to and were embedded into the real Vietnam. It was this experience in Dak Rao that we all but stumbled across that really made us feel a part of the country. On the sides of Highway 1, buffalo were being herded across the plateau by a local farmer. It was this simplistic sight and the openness and friendliness to communicate, despite neither of us speaking each other's language, that really turned this into an extraordinary experience. Whilst we came here to ride bikes to Hanoi, the beauty was definitely in what we saw between each day's start and finish. And as we rode on from Dak Rao to Pleiku, there was a real sense of openness. All the confusion and mayhem that had built up as we tried to figure out this country had all but faded within this single experience. The morning of day 13 and a massive ride awaits us. We've embedded ourselves in the heart of the country's central highlands. And we're riding on the famed Highway 1, the site of many wartime battles between Vietnamese, French and American troops. Today our ride was to take us 138 kilometers to Lang Hoi. We planned to get there by mid-afternoon, but with the winding hilly terrain, we weren't to be surprised if we were still riding late into the evening. Alrighty, uh, we've been riding for a few hours now um, and we stopped for a little bit of coffee. It's hard to talk because my mouth's gone all numb. Um, we've gone from being down there in the, the sun, we're actually uh, we're now up basically we're in amongst the clouds. Um, as we're riding, it's not exactly raining, it's just, it's just drizzle in the air. Um, but we're actually on level now with all the clouds and we've just pulled over because the view here is absolutely magnificent. Uh, I thought we left the highlands behind actually. 
um, but it looks like looks like it continues more um, it's just incredible the views it looks so grey over that way as well hopefully we're not riding um, hopefully the road doesn't take us over there but um, yeah absolutely incredible Highway 1 had a surprise awaiting us around every bend. When we thought we'd start descending, the road would take us higher. And soon enough, we were riding in the clouds. And while our nads were shriveling, all we could do was smile at the insane situation we had found ourselves in. getting out of the hills, turns out we've never been higher up a hill. We're actually inside a cloud right now. The visibility is like 20 meters. We just had two trucks go past and we couldn't see them until they were pretty much right there. We had to kind of like hustle our bikes out of the way because we're almost like leaking out onto the road here. But yeah, there's like a very fine mist in the air and like a really thin drizzle coming down. And we're starting to get really damp. So hopefully the next town isn't too far away because too much longer in this we're gonna get really cold and really wet and hopefully you know, we don't want anyone to pick up like pneumonia or anything. So yeah, and also our equipment is getting drenched in these conditions. So yeah, we'll see you at the next town or the next stop. We'd done it. We'd reached the highest altitude of Highway 1 and finally the road started to descend. With about 50 kilometers to ride to get to our home for the night in Langhoi, the bikes could finally stretch out their wheels and we banged the little engines into overdrive and bombed onwards in our damp, manky clothes. It probably wasn't the warmest afternoon on the bikes, but damn it, it was probably one of the most fun. Okay, so um, here we are in the guest house of some very friendly locals. There's a lot of buzz in the air because tonight's a celebration for the Lunar New Year. We're hoping to make it to Hoi um, for it because there's going to be fireworks and we can't wait to be a fire We've had a pretty good sleep on land. There's this rooster that's been making the biggest racket the whole night. Uh, it's been keeping some of this up but um, yeah, overall it's been one of the uh, better sleeps that I've had. Uh, we've had a nice hot shower, we're ready to go. The hogs are tied up and uh, we should reach um, Hoi An today, uh, which is great because you know, it's a slightly larger city. There's going to be uh, some restaurants for us and, and the promise of this new celebration sounds really exciting. Uh, it's only about 80 clicks away, so we should get there by lunchtime, I think. Um, but even if we do have some kind of delay, it will be like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So, so yeah, looking forward to it, but we'll see you there. After our night at the Rooster Farm, we hightailed it out of Lang Hoi. Bit a bit murky from our on and off night's sleep. In Vietnam, it was the eve of Tet, the Vietnamese New Year. We've been told that it was the most important and popular festivals in Vietnam. We'd also been told that these celebrations can last up to a week and that the country would be all but shut down. Today, we'd be arriving in Hoi An, which was only about 60 kilometers from last night's bed. The weather had turned a bit grey after yesterday's riding in the clouds, but it'll take more than that to dampen our moods. The town of Hoi An is divided into two parts. There's the modern town, and then there's the historical Hoi An ancient town. And the ancient town is where we wanted to be. And after a bit of excitement thinking we'd arrived early, we found out it was about 33 kilometers further down the road. We arrived in Hoi An at about 3 p.m. in a hustle of activity. Plenty of bikes on the roads and a lot more tourists were running about. After our last few days out in the wilderness, we were looking forward to finding a delicious hamburger and downing a frothy ale. Of course, we also looked forward to exploring Hoi An and finding out what all this fuss was about. Hoi An, recognized as a World Heritage Site, is home to about 120,000 people. It's hugely popular among tourists due to its long, rich history which is maintained and visible through its traditional architecture, as well as through the many crafts, textiles, and ceramics on display. There's a real small town feel about Hoi An. Despite the packed streets and hordes of people, it still maintains its mysterious charm that lends itself to its surroundings. 
Off the main street, there's a big market square. Here, people from all walks of life set up trade and there's plenty of places to eat and drink at. On the banks of Hoi An runs the Tubon River, which people still use today to wash and clean in. It's also a great opportunity to get a boat down the river to see Hoi An from a different perspective. As the sun fell over Hoi An, it would be a lie if we said we weren't enjoying our time here. What's happening, man? I'm locked in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door, you bastard. It's day 15 of the greatest trek, and it's day one of the new Vietnamese calendar year. Last night's celebrations were a tad tame as we came down with a debilitating stomach bug, but it wasn't going to stop us from heading out to the World Heritage listed, historical, Mi Sun site. The site is about 26 kilometers from Old Hoi An, and is a cluster of abandoned and partially ruined Hindu temples, constructed all the way back from around the 4th century. Okay. So, um, after the crazy markets from yesterday, we, uh, we're into some much more peaceful territory. There, these are the uh, Mi Sun uh, ruins, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mm. It's very cool, um, lots of old ruins, um, and from what I can tell, there seems to be a bit of um, uh, religious purpose behind them. Uh, we're going to try and find out a bit more as we go, go along. Okay. But yeah, very cool. Yeah, there was someone with a guide, um, who I was trying to just listen in a bit and learn a bit more about this uh, this site. But um, hey, we're learning as we go, it's how, it's how to do things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really quite eerie around here. It's very, apart from like a few chuckles from fellow gawkers, um, it's actually it's very interesting, mm. quite nice. Maybe we can sleep here tonight. Yes, we have looked into some rooms and uh, yeah, it should be a good night. Ah, unfortunately, we didn't get to sleep in the abandoned ruins. But we did spend the afternoon riding some 50-odd kilometers back past Hoi An and up to Da Nang, as we aim to keep on track and reaching Hanoi in 25 days. Okay, here we are in uh, Da Nang, the, uh, apparently the third largest city in Vietnam. Uh, we had a really awesome hotel room tonight, so we're all rested and, uh, rested and happy. Ready to move on uh, to Hue today, which is uh, it's not too far down the uh, Highway One. So yeah, we're just going to head there, get rid of our stuff, and then explore the city a bit, and then um, from there it's going to be probably back onto the Ho Chi Minh Trail. But we'll see how we go. Um, it shouldn't take us too long to get there today. Um, so yeah, we'll see you there. So we're going to try and find Hue now. Um, we will uh, see how this traffic goes this morning. It's um, the day after their New Year the public holiday thing. Although I think it's the uh, Tet all week long, but it shouldn't be as bad. Anyways, let's go. Beautiful day. One hundred kilometers to Hui, with the sun shining, palm trees lining the road, and the ocean to our sides, we felt like we were easy riding down the west coast of America. The roads were so relaxed; it was a great morning of riding, one that we didn't really want to end. If there was ever an advert for biking through Vietnam, this was probably one of those days that would definitely sell it. As we went further out from Da Nang, the scenery around us changed to greenery on the left of us and a magnificent blue ocean to the right. We were stopping continuously to chillax and just soak up the postcard picturesque views in front of us. 
Riding on through the day, we passed through small towns which had a bit of traffic, but by and large it was a trek that gave itself to us. We had the whole place to ourselves, and it was absolutely amazing. We rolled into the city of Hui just after 4pm. It took us by surprise at how big Hui was. It was probably the first time since leaving Ho Chi Minh that we'd experienced so much traffic on the streets. Nonetheless, we'd arrived safe and sound and found a cheeky place to stay. A place named the Google Hotel. The big question on both of our minds, did they have Wi-Fi in the bedrooms? <laughs> 